What's going on, YouTube? Deluxe here. Headed to the supposed shop. Pick up some supplies this morning. Just left. Uh, just left court. It's funny how they find out shit. Following five years later, I got a DUI because I was dipping after the club in 2000. 14. I actually was a point over the damn uh, limit. Point eight was the limit. Point nine. So I was coming across the bridge. There was some cones in the street. So I dipped. Not to dip. And I was driving that Audi, that A6, that V8 thing. I dipped. The fucking police was sitting right in the cut. They thought I was swerving and shit, but I was trying to dip around a cone. So they pulled me over, had me do the the nose test and the, and the, the balance beam test and all that shit. I did all that shit, and then he was like, "We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make you blow." I'm like, "Blow? I don't want to blow." So he was like, "If you don't blow in the state of Indiana, we automatically suspend your license for six months." So, I said, fuck it, I'm gonna blow. So when I blew, I was point .9. So they took me down. Make a long story short, put me on probation, did the probation and everything. Probation officer was cool. And he didn't tell me how to take a drug or alcohol class. Fast forward, knowing that I got a Wisconsin license, Wisconsin sent me a letter in the mail five years later, talking about you have to take a drug and alcohol class, we're gonna suspend your license. I said, what the fuck? So now, I have to go down there and take care of that. So, now I gotta take a drug and alcohol class. Which is gonna take 20 hours. $150, which ain't shit. So I'm gonna take that and get that out the way. But, uh, on this, on this route to, uh, Get some flies up. Gotta get some carpet for this uh, Chevelle. Not Chevelle. It's cut. It's 442. Get some black carpet for this thing. So I can put some carpet in there. Get this uh, the whole back half of the car in there. Build the door panels today. And get it up out of here. So stay tuned for the new video. Deluxe, baby. I holla. Yo, yo, Deluxe here. Leaving my house. I have to make a pit stop. Now I'm on my way to the shop for this long ass day. So, this is the life of the deluxe style. When you're living that deluxe style, you gotta go through these many things. So, uh, that's all I got to say about that one. But, uh, let me change this motherfucking view. How the fuck do I change the view? Uh. What the fuck? Had to stop to give me an energy drink. Rip it. The cheapest, most powerfulest, most potent energy drink you can buy. 99 cents. to give me an extra seven hours of boost to do some crazy shit in the shop. So we, I'm on my way to home, um, home Depot first and then Harbor Freight. Gotta pick up some magnets from Harbor Freight. I usually don't get them from there. But I'm gonna try to try these ones at Harbor Freight and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with them once I get to the shop. trick that you can use magnets. Most people don't know, well, non-experienced people don't know. I'm a fabricator, upholstery guy, shit, stereo guy, all that shit. I do it all. And I don't understand how those big shops 
can talk shit about me. Like he don't charge enough. We charge more than him. I don't. We don't care what he charges. They got about 10, 15 people to feed. I only got me, so I can keep my prices low. I keep my overhead real low. I don't need all that extra shit. I ain't with all that glamour and the glitz shit neither. I done had it all. I got seven whips. I don't even drive, none of them. I drive my work truck, what I'm in right now, every day. So, I don't try to keep up with the Joneses. And I don't try to put my pocket against nobody else's neither. But some of them shops out there, boy, they be talking so much shit. But you know, I outwork all those shops. When they go home, I'm still working. When they close up at five, I close up at five the next day. 24 hour shifts, it's been time I done did 28 hours straight, standing up all day. Tired in the motherfucker, drink me a couple of these energy drinks, I'm on. I done did a whole interior job while everybody else done went home and shit. But that's how I work. I even set my third bedroom up in my crib. That's a little uh, sewing room. So when I go home at, the, at night, I'm sewing seats. My girl ain't, she make me mad, I'm in the room sewing seats. That's how I get it in all the time. She must make me mad every goddamn day. Seems like I'm doing a whole set of seats a day. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of bigger shops, man. They uh, try to talk down on the player's name. But I don't even care. Cause it, I just know they see me. They see me, I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. I've been here 20 some years. I've been here longer than the majority of these shops around, especially black shops. Cause you know how black people do. They get a shop, get some money, wanna buy some rims and some necklaces and shit and some pop bottles at the club and go bankrupt in 60 days. Shit, I've been out here 25 summers. All me. I'm, a, I'm my own uh, fabricator. I'm my own upholstery guy. I'm my own stereo guy. I do all that by myself. And I call my, my my one guy in. He helps me. He do the grunt work because sometimes I don't feel like lifting the seats and shit and, and all that extra shit, and taking apart shit and wiring shit. But I can. Call my dude in and he take care of me. We pop these cars out. I work on four cars at a time by myself. All the time. I can set up a, I can sew a whole set of seats. Seven hours. Two buckets. Back seat and a door panel. Seven hours. I've done it plenty of times. That's how I made most of my money. I used to do Monte Carlo SS's overnight. When I was back in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, I was known for doing seats and interior jobs overnight. I used to have guys that was hustling, used to come to my house about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and drop off the back seat. Go hustle for a couple hours, pay me for the back seat, take the front seat out, drop it off, go hustle, come back a couple hours, pick up the front seat. Drop the other seat off, go hustle, bring me some money, and pick the other seats up, and they driving. By the night time, that whole car done. And I was getting paid. When I opened my first shop, my first shop, see, I used to work, I used to work at, uh, doing mechanical design at Eaton Corporation. Some of you guys know about Eaton Corporation, they make superchargers and shit cars but I worked in the Navy control division I used to design parts for nuclear submarines and shit and computer aided drafting and all that other shit I went to school for all that so anyway I did that and I just couldn't stand being in the office with some dockers on and motherfucking button up and brief briefcase and uh, motherfucking pocket protectors and shit and pencils and, and rulers and shit I, I, that wasn't me I did that for like a year and a half so one day I just quit 
I took my check. Well, since it was a government job, I had to get paid. They had to pay me not to work nowhere else. So, uh, six months, I got all my benefits and my checks. So I took my check, one of my checks, and I uh, paid rent deposit on the building, which actually was an old liquor store. So they didn't have no garage or nothing. It had a driveway on the side. So I turned that into a shop. I little, did a little remodeling to the inside. I took the, the coolers that was in there, old broke coolers and shit. I made them into my little spray booth so I can dye my pieces. Uh, I was doing gold plating back then. I did the gold plating in the back. I uh, had my sewing machine in one of the office. And shit, I got it in that way. And my first, shit, the first three weeks, I think it took me about three weeks. I had my cousin stuff working with me, so it was about six of us. So I was making about, I was doing a car, a car a day, car and a half a day. I was only charging a G for a whole interior. I'm fucking all the seats, seats, door panels, and with everything. I was charging a G. So I was doing like six thousand dollars a week. Plus I was paying my cousin them, so I was on, I was probably giving them. They probably took fifteen hundred of the money. So I was making, let's say roughly, I was making forty five hundred dollars a week. Just, just me, starting. So, in about three, three weeks to a month, I went from a 5.0. Yeah, I had a 5.0. Three weeks after Menace Society came out, I had a 5.0 drop, just like that nigga came. But anyway, uh, after uh, three, four weeks working at my own shop, had my own shop. I bought me an Acker Legend. And believe me, back then when Acker Legends was a shit, that was a $35,000 car. I had one, a chameleon one. Yes, with 18s on it. And that was the biggest wheel they had back then. Chameleon. Blue to purple flip. I had one. And I had a 5.0. And I was shitting on niggas. And I was just doing it. So, I done had all this bullshit. I don't even want nothing no more. I just want the truck. Just give me a work truck. And some money. That's it. So, I can outwork any shop out here. I don't care if you got 20 people. Because out of 20 people, only two of them really want to support the business. You and maybe your one of your closest friends. The rest of them, that's just for the money. So, most of the time, people don't even like doing this shit. But I love it. I done took so many losses doing this shit. It don't make no sense. I had motherfuckers set cars on fire back in Milwaukee with all them hating ass niggas setting cars on fire in the lot because they beefing with somebody. I had people break into the shops back in Milwaukee. And none of that shit happened since I've been in Indiana, so it's all good. But uh, yeah, I done took so many losses and I still keep pushing because I love doing this shit. So if you don't love it, you're not going to make no money. Because you got to love this shit to get up every day and deal with a whining ass customer or a picky customer. And another thing, I get more love out of state than I do in this state. Well, the state of Kentucky. Indiana is fine. But Kentucky, because I'm from Kentucky, I was born in Kentucky. The people in Kentucky, my my customers from Kentucky, I don't fuck with them. No more. But all my out-of-state customers that be shipping cars, I get love from all of them. Shout out to all my customers out of state. If it wasn't for you, shit, I wouldn't be here. But uh, the people out of state love you more than the people close to you. And that's strange. I don't know why, why it's like that. I can't figure it out. It's just that they hate so much. People around hate so much they're always saying shit. And I don't even be around people. I be in the shop all day, every day. That's the only reason I ain't in prison or something right now. Cause I swear to God I'd be in pull a hole through somebody. But uh I stay to myself, get this work done. I love creating cars, creating different shit. I try to be different than everybody else. I stay in my own lane. I ain't trying to compete with nobody. And it is what it is. So if you like deluxe, shit, I love you back, because I'm here to stay. I ain't going nowhere. I'll probably be doing this till the day I die. 
even though I got college education, this is what I chose to do. So, I just got a son. My son um, just started college today. So, I'm going to have to wire that tuition money today. So, I know I'm going to be doing this for a while now because I got to pay that tuition. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that took care of. So, send me some cars, man. Send me some cars. Send me a couple of them cars down this way, man. To all the people that send me a car, DM me about sending me a car, I'm going to give you a free Popeye's chicken sandwich. And I'm going to give you $500 off. So, DM me right now and send me a motherfucking car. I holla.